The new Lion King prequel, Mufasa, tells a whole new story about Simba's dad and his eventual tense relationship with his brother, Scar. I always wanted a brother. Now, if these two lions were really brothers, they wouldn't have hated each other at all. In fact, they would have been growing out for life. But if Mufasa was really an orphan, well, let's just say the movie would have turned out a lot different. Today, we'll meet with some lion tracking scientists in Uganda, and I'll take you out to see some of the lion behavior that I've observed and filmed, so we can find out the truth about male lions and what life is really like for a lion like Bufasa. I'm Greg, and this is Presto Wild, where every month I take you out on a wildlife adventure to see incredible creatures, learn how they survive, and talk to scientists that are making awesome discoveries about them. This month, the myths and truths about the kings of the jungle. The new Lion King movie, Mufasa, gives kids a new story about the beloved characters from the world of the Lion King. It gives them new songs to sing. And the movie's got a lot of not just how lions look, but how they really act. The movie tells the story about how Simba's father, Mufasa, became the king and how Mufasa and Scar became brothers. In the movie, the brothers are inseparable. And in the real world, that's how lion brothers act. Brothers normally shouldn't fight with each other. They should stay together for the rest of their lives. Even if they're not like um, blood brothers, but they were born in like the same pride, they're very loving to each other. You can see that there is a, there's a lot of love to each other because they'll, they'll groom each other, they'll lick each other, they'll bump heads every time they meet. It's, uh, there's a lot of communication that's going on when they do meet each other or when they are with each other. Normally, two brothers will have an inseparable bond up to death. That's Oren Cornell. Along with a team of other scientists, he tracks lions in Uganda's Queen Elizabeth National Park. More on their research later. Cornell said that while Mufasa and Scar would have been buddies if they were born in the same pride, in the movie, Mufasa's actually an orphan from another pride alliance, and Scar saves him. Scar's father is not happy about it. We do not associate with outsiders. But Dad, I saved his life. That is real. If lions come across a cub that isn't from their pride, they don't bring it into the fold. Nature is very tough. Lions, especially lion cubs, live a very hard life where everything around them is an enemy, also other males. So if a lion cub would get lost in nature, high chances is that any other animal will just kill it because the mortality rates of lion cubs are about 50% before reaching two years. So about half of the lion's cubs will die, even if they are already in a pride. I mean, imagine if they're not in a pride and their parents have died, chances are of their survival are very limited, especially if there's no intervention from like a conservation agency. Another thing you might think about lion prides is that all the hunting is done by the female lions. And the male lions don't hunt. That's not true. Yeah, they hunt <laughs> quite often. Males form what we call coalitions, where males will form like a, a bond from young age up to the point where they die, and it normally doesn't break off. That bond is a lifetime bond. So when they are in these coalitions, they will hunt every three days, every four days by themselves. When they're with females, they will also help the females put down larger prey because they just have more body mass. So they'll be able to like put down the buffalo and then the females will come to finish the kill. Scientists have also found that the way male lions hunt can be different from how females hunt. While females hunt in big groups, sometimes just a couple of males will gather together in a thick bush and ambush prey from there. And that prey is sometimes bigger than what the females could have grabbed in their group. Another misconception about male lions is that they're lazy. I mean, yeah, they sleep a lot. They're cats. But male lions have a lot to do. A lion, when fully fed, 
can sleep a lot, can sleep up to 16, sometimes even 18 hours a day. So inherently they are a little bit lazy, but they're saving all this energy for these bursts. And then also on cool days when, when the sun isn't as blazing as it is in the savanna, they do show a lot of activity. So males will engage and play with each other. Cubs will be annoying their mothers and also make them chase them around for a while. So they're not that lazy. They also move a lot, especially during rainy season. There's a lot of movement because prey gets more spread out. So they have to move more for food. People can say that they're lazy because they see them in the daytime and they see them sleeping in the daytime. But of course, lions are nocturnal animals. So most of their movement and activities during the nighttime. Hey, it's Greg. I know that male lions aren't lazy and neither are you, which is why I know you have the energy to hit the subscribe button below so you can see all the awesome adventures here on the channel. When the lion trackers from volcanoes are tracking the lions around Queen Elizabeth National Park, they also see some other behavior that might really surprise you about male lions. For starters, the lions in this park climb trees. They also do something that you see in the trailer for Mufasa that might surprise you. I saved us! You're saying? They seem to be uh, swimming swimming long distances. We filmed uh, the first ever long distance crossing of uh, African lions in Africa. But it's not just the one lion we filmed, it's multiple prides of lions which are doing this crossing of the Kazinga Channel. It's a channel of about 1.5 kilometers in width and it connects Lake George and Lake Edward. There's one other thing that the scientists say the Mufasa movie definitely gets right about lions. They're not just beasts, they're more than that. They're not vicious creatures. They're actually really soft when you see them in the daytime. Uh, they're very cuddly. They have a lot of communication. They have emotions, <laughs> some could say. The Volcanoes team doesn't just track lions. They're also working with the Uganda Wildlife Authority to help train more local scientists to study local animals. You can make a donation to help with their efforts at volcanosafaris.com community. Thanks to the Volcanoes team for their expertise and their footage. Thanks to Century Cinemax at Arena Mall for letting me film in their theater. And to you for watching. See you next month.